This episode is sponsored by Celestron, manufacturer of high-quality telescopes and an industry leader in developing exciting optical products with revolutionary technologies. I'm Kelly Beattie of Sky and Telescope magazine, and tonight we're going on a tour of the stars and planets that you'll see overhead during April. First, we'll check in with the Moon, try to catch some planets in transition, learn about the celestial twins, and hunt for meteors toward month's end. So grab your curiosity and come along on this month's Sky Tour. This is one of the better months for stargazing. Spring evenings are generally pleasant, and the bugs haven't taken control yet. Even with daylight time in effect, evening twilight comes fairly early. You'll find that the sun sets between 7.30 and 8 during most of this month, and by 9 p.m. it's good and dark. As was the case in February and again in March, the moon starts off April in the morning sky, rising well after midnight at its last quarter phase. So the evening sky will be moon-free for a while. A very important new moon follows on April 8th, more about that in a second, and first quarter is on April 15th. The full pink moon looms large on April 23rd. It's called that because the pink flowers of flocks tend to bloom this time of year. In case you haven't heard by now, there'll be a total eclipse of the sun on Monday, April 8th. On that day, the sun will start to spin in the opposite direction and Jupiter will slam into Saturn. No, not really, but it will be a pretty crazy day across North America. Totality on that day will last up to four and a half minutes, making this the eighth longest duration in the 21st century. Now, if you don't plan to travel to stand in the moon's shadow, here are three things to remember. First, remember that virtually all of North America will experience a partial solar eclipse that day, so be prepared. And second, make sure that you have certified solar viewers to look at the sun during the partial phases. And finally, this will be the last time a total solar eclipse will touch the contiguous U.S., until 2044. For more information, including links for determining the circumstances for your location, go to skyandtelescope.org 2024 eclipse. Planet-wise, this is definitely a month of transition, and that's not a good thing. As evening twilight ends, Mercury is just wrapping up its best evening showing of 2024, but it's plunging into the twilight glow so quickly that there's little chance of spotting it. Jupiter is hanging in there, literally, low above the western horizon as darkness falls. A thin crescent moon will be nearby in the early evening of April 10th. But by month's end, seeing the king of planets will be only a pleasant memory until it reappears before dawn in late June. Venus is likewise swallowed by sunlight. So that leaves Mars and Saturn both of which can be spotted before dawn if you're willing to head outside to a spot with an unobstructed view toward east. Start looking about 30 minutes before sunrise in early April and 45 minutes before later on. Watch for a pair of medium bright stars very close to the horizon. Saturn starts off to the left of Mars, but on April 10th they pass very close to one another and appear identical in brightness. After that they gradually climb higher up and get easier to spot, with Mars to the left of Saturn. I'm sorry that the planets aren't very obvious right now, but take heart. By the end of 2024, you'll be able to see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all in the evening sky at the same time. Of course, April's evening skies offer plenty of stars to check out. First, look over in the west about a half hour after sunset. In early April, as twilight deepens, you'll spot the last vestiges of the northern winter sky. Orion is there getting ready to exit for the season. Look for the three stars in a horizontal row that mark the hunter's belt. Use this belt as your starting point. One clenched fist higher up is the bright star Betelgeuse, and one fist lower down is equally bright Rigel. These two stars frame Orion's body. Now look a little wider. Two fists to the left of the belt is Sirius, the brightest star in the nighttime sky. And two fists to the right is Aldebaran, marking the eye of Taurus, the celestial bull. 
Now slide your gaze to the right of Aldebaran by one and a half fists, and you'll spot the compact cluster of stars called the Pleiades. They'll be easiest to see early in April, when they're still high enough above the western horizon at dusk. To help you, look for a thin crescent moon just below them on April 10th, and just above them on the 11th. Let's track down some other stars in the evening sky. Well above Sirius and Orion, about halfway from the southwestern horizon to overhead, is the bright star Procyon in the constellation Canis Minor, the Little Dog. Now swing your gaze well to the right of Procyon, about five times the width of your clenched fist held at arm's length, and roughly as high up, to spot the bright star Capella. In between Procyon and Capella, and a little higher up, are a nice pair of equally bright stars. These are Pollux and Castor, the twins of Gemini. Can you tell which is which? Just remember that Pollux, on the left, is closer to Procyon, and both of those names begin with P. Castor, on the right, is closer to Capella, and both of those begin with C. Pollux is also a little brighter, in part because it's closer to us, just 34 light years away, compared to 52 for Castor. These two stars mark the heads of mythology's twin brothers, by different fathers it seems, and at this time of year their heads are on top of their bodies, which hang side by side toward the horizon. Now turn to face north, raise your gaze high, and you'll immediately recognize our old friend the Big Dipper. It's positioned with its bowl at upper left and its handle curving toward lower right. According to old farmer's lore, it's upside down as if dumping April showers. Now look past the end of the handle toward east by three fists and you'll reach the star Arcturus. This is the fourth brightest star in the night sky. So, together with Sirius, which is number one, and to Capella, number six, these three stars make an enormous triangle that nearly spans the entire evening sky. I want to mention four quick things before closing. First, from April 2nd to 8th, we can all celebrate International Dark Sky Week. If you appreciate a really dark night sky, and who doesn't, go to idsw.darksky.org to learn more. Second, during the first 10 days of April, you can participate in the Globe at Night Project. This is a fun and easy way for you, your family, and your friends to judge how much light pollution is overhead. You'll be looking to see how many stars you can spot in and around the constellation Leo, which is about halfway up in the east once it gets dark. No equipment or experience is needed. And for more details, go to globeatnight.org. Third, this is the month of the Lyrid meteor shower, which peaks on the night of April 22nd. These shooting stars seem to radiate from a point in the sky near the constellation Lyra, which rises in late evening. But this year, there'll be lots of interference from a nearly full moon. Finally, April is Global Astronomy Month. Amateur stargazers worldwide will be participating in all kinds of events at small and large scales. Check out all the plans at gam-awb.org. That's about it for this month. If you want more tips for viewing the night sky, including a free interactive star chart for any time or date, check out our website, skyandtelescope.org. If you haven't already subscribed, you can find this Sky Tour on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. And please leave me a rating or a review. It'll help others to find the show. And if you want to explore the solar system and universe more deeply, please do check out the full line of binoculars and telescopes available at Celestron.com. Sky Tour is a production of Sky and Telescope, a division of the American Astronomical Society, and is produced by me, Kelly Beattie. Next month, I'll introduce you to what I call the Swiss Army Knife of the Night Sky. Until then, I wish you clear skies. <laughs>